Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll continue building up on Gaussian process intuition. In the previous video, we looked at what is Gaussian and what is the importance of covariance matrices and kernels to uh, get the prediction and confidence interval around the test data points. In this video, we'll look at uh, the options available in scikit-learn that uh, can be used to uh, fit a Gaussian, to fit a model to, uh, with a Gaussian process. And for that, it, uh, we do have several kernels available. So we'll look at what kernels those are. And these are the references that we have seen in the previous video. So a Gaussian process can start with finding the prior. So we are looking at, in this case, a test data, and we can sample that data to find a, a prior mean and covariance, and then use that covariance along with the covariance from the train data to find the posterior mean and posterior covariance. And this is summarized in this particular relation down here that we have discussed in the previous video as well. And from that, we can get our uh, predictions or posterior functions. And here on the plot, we see that these dotted lines, these are different functions that uh, we can create based on uh, this information. And then from those, we can find the prediction which would be uh, the one with the best fit and we can also then get the confidence interval bounds along that particular fit as shown in this particular plot so where we have a data point the confidence interval bounds are much narrower and when there is no observed data point the uncertainty is much higher and therefore we have very broad uh, confidence re confidence interval regions here so here we have the plot for the prior on the left and posterior on the right hand side so on the left we see that there is a lot of wavy functions because uh, these are prior functions and there are no observed data points in it. Uh, on the other hand, on the right hand side, once we introduce uh, the observed data points, such as shown here, the five data points, you can see that those data points uh, bring these functions together. And uh, as you can see, wherever there are data points, the confidence interval range is also much narrower such as in these areas whereas once we leave those uh, regions of observed data when we moved into um, a new area where there is no observed data then the confidence interval range increases dramatically and you can also see that the functions uh, tend to become more wavy or irregular in those regions because of the increased uncertainty. Now the same uh, particular fit can be done in scikit-learn using the Gaussian process regressor. And here we get a different plot, uh, but the main idea is that uh, we still see the same, um, same concept that wherever there are these data points, the confidence interval is much, much narrower. And as soon as we go in regions where those data points are not there, then we see more uncertainty in the uh, in these uh, functions. And here, this is on the left-hand side, we have the prior where the main best prediction is just the mean. And we can see a lot of wavy uh, uh, functions. Now, these functions, the uh, properties of these functions, such as how wavy they can be, or uh, how close they can be, those can be uh, changed using different kernels. 
and these are list of kernels that scikit-learn has a uh, radial basis function rational quadratic exponential sine squared mat matern and uh, dot product kernel so these kernels can be used to find the similarity between data points and in addition we have this constant kernel which can add a constant value to the kernel uh, and a noise kernel that is shown here now in we can uh, so there is a lot of flexibility in how this can be used either we can use this kernel as is or we can combine these several kernels in different ways uh, so that it tries to approximate the function that uh, approximate the trend in the data as best as we can so if we look in this particular case uh, there is some kernel product kernel and exponential kernel so we can add we can take for example the rbf kernel and multiply it to the constant kernels using the product or we can add all of that to another rbf kernel using the sum so there are various combinations of these that we can use to uh, create the final kernel that goes uh, into the model and finally in the course snippet we have this new library gaussian underscore process and we can import kernels and gaussian process regressor from that and then we have this uh, train and test data set so notice that the test data set is uh, in this case created using the train, train data set and then a kernel here this is showing just one kernel rbf and within gaussian process regressor then we can use uh, pass on this uh, va uh, variable name kernel uh, to input that kernel and for optimizing the parameters of the kernel there is a provision which is n underscore restarts underscore optimizer so here i've mentioned three so this value can be changed to uh, allow the uh, gaussian process regressor to find the optimal values for the kernels that are uh, used in that model and after that you can perform the fit and look at the value for log margin and likelihood see to see how the fit is and then use that uh, to predict on the test set that was it for this video i hope uh, in this video you learned uh, what are the different uh, um, kernels that can be used with scikit-learn uh, to perform gaussian process and also a general intuition about uh, uh, what gaussian process it is and we'll look at the implementation of all of this in the next video where we'll do first implementation with numpy only and then we'll use the gaussian process regressor in the past two videos i've not mentioned about uh, the classifier uh, that can be also used with gaussian processes uh, but we'll look at the implementation of classifier in one of the future videos as well uh, so i hope to see you all in the next video please like share and subscribe thank you